Well, delighted to have you guys all together. So with no further ado, let's get into Group C. I mean, it, it feels like one of those classic World Cup moments that we've just witnessed. You had all the drama, Argentina and Poland ultimately going through, but it was really hanging on a knife edge thanks to Mexico putting in a really unexpected fight. Nigel Rio Coker, I'm going to come to you first. Were you surprised that Mexico managed to even push it this far? I mean, it, it, we, it feels like we wrote Mexico off like pretty much after that second game. The crazy thing for me, guys, is this is the Mexico I expected. And it took them till the last game to really show up. This is the foundation of Mexican football, Mexican teams. Yes, they're lacking a goal scorer and they're lacking that bit of creativity that they've always had historically. The foundation of what we saw, they literally grinded Saudi Arabia to a pulp. And what people have to take into account, this Saudi Arabia team is not no easy mugs. This is a good Saudi Arabia team. They've been spending years in development. The performances that they're showing there shows there's a humendous potential in this Saudi Arabia team to really cause some serious trouble in the next World Cup if they keep these lads together and they develop some more youngsters coming. There is great potential there. The foundation is there for Saudi Arabia now. But this Mexico team, for me, the frustrating thing is they took to this game, JJ, to see what we all expected from Mexico, what we know historically Mexico is capable of. But there is questions in the fact of they don't have that attacking threat. They don't have that attacking threat. They don't have that real creativity that all historic Mexican teams have had. But it was a great game. This was a real, for me, this was like a quarterfinal, semifinal game of a World Cup. That's how exciting and entertaining it was. For me, it was a little bit about the intensity, once again, of the game. We've seen this uh, in Mexico side playing so many times with that intensity, rush, uh, to go in attack, uh, the whole team trying to, to, to show that they want to go for it. And today we've seen it for uh, those 90 plus minutes. Uh, that we've seen. We've seen Henry doing what they have to do up front, making, trying to, to arrive uh, from second line, trying to be always into the box. We've seen Chavez with that amazing goal Ooh. from uh, set pieces. It was one of the best uh, goals that we've seen so far in the competition. We see Ch uh, Chucky Lozano doing what he does the best, beating players, creating uh, danger in, in the right side, also playing a little bit in the, in the left side. And the rest of the team just supported from behind because you could see the uh, South Arabia for, for moments they couldn't find a, a way to, to make even a contest. Like they were so well organized. So I was impressed once again for this Mexico and I was pushing to, to see if they could manage. They have in the last 25 minutes, three chances in front of goal. They couldn't uh, get that third goal who allowed them to, to go through. But uh, at least they left uh, everything on the field and probably the supporters, uh, even though that they are going to be out, they're going to think all the time, why didn't we start uh, the first game of the competition mm. the same way? This is a Mexico team that's going to be kicking themselves in that first game against Poland, a game which they were the better team that were just missing the final touch and the finishing touch across these two games. The Argentina game, that was really a foregone conclusion once Argentina got that first goal. But one thing that struck me, this was the first time during this World Cup that we saw Liga MX. This was more about Liga MX and a lot of these players in this game against Saudi Arabia, they are stars of the Mexican Soccer League. And it really showcases the talents coming through, the young talent down the spride. Henry, Henry Martin plays for Club America. Orbelin Pineda plays in Liga MX. Luis Chavez, what a golazo of a free kit rocket from the free kick into the top corner, plays in the Mexican League. Hector Moreno, Mexican League. Guillermo Ochoa, Mexican League. Good Mexican national team player or good Mexican national teams have always had a good core of league representatives in the first two games. I think they got away from that. That's given them success. And now they go back to what's worked in the past. And it just, man, that goal was coming. It was coming. It was coming. VAR again, twice. I think this, uh, both calls were correct. But man, just VAR intervening again in a timely moment at this World Cup. You got to feel for Mexico. Now, I'm going to change the, the the question slightly to look at it from a CONCACAF point of view. Obviously, mm. we're still waiting to see what happens with Costa Rica. Uh, you know, but you know how how big a blow is it losing Mexico at this stage of the competition? Because obviously, yeah. they're usually one of the powers that you kind of expect to get themselves into the knockout stage. And does that put you know sort of an added element of playing for for, not just for, for, for pride for the USMNT, but playing for the regional pride to establish themselves as the leading uh, you know, regional power in, uh, in CONCACAF, looking ahead to that clash with the Netherlands and then potentially Argentina after that. 
Absolutely. CONCACAF has been disappointing at this World Cup, and Mexico has been the flagship of that. Canada alongside of them, but the Canadians were in a very difficult group. Mexico in a difficult group, but given the chances that they had and given the lack of goal-scoring threats that they really had outside of this game, that is what I'm most disappointed in with Mexico at this World Cup. In World Cups of past, Mexico are a team that have that quality in the final third. The last World Cup, the game against Germany, they shocked the world. one nothing win against the Germans. There's a believability in that attack. They have Chicharito Hernandez, who was scoring goals in the German Bundesliga, scoring goals in La Liga, Premier League. Carlos Vela scores goals, uh, scores goals in Major League Soccer now, but was scoring goals in La Liga. You have Chucky Lozano, who was scoring goals in the Mexican League before his move to Serie A, where he is adding goals and assists. That is a more formidable front line than what we've seen at this World Cup. I think Mexico are in a bit of a crisis. We saw that going into qualifying. They, they squeak through, and points, they do lie sometimes because they were already – deep in problems their manager Tata Martino there was a bit of question marks do you even keep him in his job going into this World Cup I don't think he was the right guy to lead this Mexican national team in Qatar and then you look at the likes of Costa Rica if you went into this World Cup and you would have told me that the USMNT and Costa Rica would be the two remaining teams U.S. qualifying and Costa Rica having any chance in hell of getting to the knockout round, I would have told you you're drinking whatever is on Nigel <laughs> Rio Coker's cruise ship because you're crazy. But here we are, and Costa Rica have a golden opportunity getting a surprise shock win against Japan the last time out. I wouldn't say it's a crisis for Mexico, JJ. I think for me it's a reality of they need to rebuild. Who just labeled all the goal scorers that they have? They didn't have goal scorers in this tournament really and truly. That's not what we're used to seeing. And if you really want to be more critical they play very conservative that's not the mexico that we're used to seeing mexico play a different style of football front foot attacking minded just want to, they want to score more goals than you that's just the basic way to play they play great tiki taki style football i think lucho may even add to this maybe we might disagree but mexicans really started that tiki taki football they always wanted to play football and play right through the heart of you mm -hmm. they always had goalkeepers that were great with their feet who could ping a ball as good as the best player on the pitch that's always been their way we haven't seen that We've seen them trying to kind of transform a bit to become more Europeanized, but it's not working. It's taken away from the culture of what makes them so special and so unique. I'd say they are really in a redevelopment phase in the sense of they need to bring new blood through. They need to plan for the future and start bringing in top young talent through now because if they're going to stay this way, it's not going to work. And then what, with Costa Rica, that for me has just been absolutely mind-boggling. No one ever saw them to lose like they did in the manner against Spain. But then, yeah, get the result in the next game. And I think for me, it's something that we also said before this World Cup. We didn't know what to expect. It's uncharted territory. No one knew what was going to happen in this World Cup. So really and truly, I can't act as super surprised as I am now because this is what we kind of said might happen in this World Cup and we're actually seeing it right now. And it's just so unpredictable. Yeah, exactly. Lots of surprises that it can happen in the group stages. After that, I think that we are going to stop seeing surprises or at least big ones. We we are getting kind of in an arrow and, and everybody's trying to fit. Almost, I was checking what I was uh, doing just before the World Cup to do the brackets and almost I got everyone that is involved, probably not Mexico. I have to say that Mm. Uh, with a lot of pain, but when I was uh, doing the, this bracket, I didn't put Mexico to go through because it, it was coming with a lot of problems, a lot of doubts into the squad, a lot of players that were out. And, and Nigel, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna add with uh, for you that Mexico for me in the years that they've been passing through. Now you guys have been talking that the the the, the essence of uh, the Mexico year yeah, is through the Tiki Taka, the La Volpe, the the, the, the big manager who kind of. Uh, Past that the world of playing this kind of style. I think Pep Guardiola also mentioned a few times that when he stayed there at Celaya, he picked a lot of uh, the way uh, and the styles of uh, of this La Volpe style to try to play all the game, trying to build up from the back, uh, keepers they can play with the ball. So that style is there. But I think the best Mexico that we've seen in the past uh, few years is when you got a mix between the Mexican players that they are playing in the National League and the ones that come from international, Guardado, yeah. Vela, Chicharrito, mm -hmm. uh, Rafa Marquez, all those international players, they were playing abroad. And you bring that experience yeah. of playing in the Premier League, in La Liga, in, it in Italy, in Germany, all those experiences, you bring it and you, uh, and you pass it through to your national team. And that happened also, and I mentioned before, 
with the Spanish national team. When the Spanish national team was winner of, um, of the World Cup in the Euros, it was because Xavi Alonso, um, I, I, how is it called, um, Silva, all these mm. kind of players, they were playing outside in the Premier League, in Italy, in Germany. And you bring all these kind of different experiences into your national team. And then you got a, a good mix of experience. And I think that's the lacking of Mexico this time, that at the end, it wasn't enough. 